Happy to see those who are joining. Michael and Melissa, good to have you. Sister Debbie is on, Sister Angela. The Vesters are on. And uh, hopefully the others will join. All right. We're going to pray to get going. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you on this another Sabbath day. We thank you for the wonderful privilege of coming in worship as we fellowship together. Join our hearts and our voices and our thoughts heavenward as we seek to focus on you. We thank you for having taken us through yet another week, another day. And Lord, we pray now that as we worship you, you will bless, bless us abundantly. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. We have a hymn lined up. So we're going to go straight into that. And hopefully, Brother Sylvester, are you there? Sylvester? Yes, Pastor, I'm here. Oh, hallelujah. In preparation for his return. Just a moment. Okay. All right, so we're going to take our hymn. Sing them over again to me. Wonderful words of life. Um, as usual, we're going to, with our mics muted, sing together. Right? Words and music will be projected. Let's go together. It's always a privilege to study the word of God. Wonderful words, beautiful words, wonderful words of life. And tonight we have Brother Sylvester, who will continue to lead out. I'm not sure if the subject remains with the focus on dreams and visions, but let's see. Brother Sylvester, it's your time. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, good night, everyone. Good night, sir. And welcome. Thank you. You too. Hope you had a good week. Welcome to all of you. It's about, same to you. Uh, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for the privilege we still have and the freedom we have 
to spend time in your word. And we now ask that your spirit will be with us and you will be our guide and teacher. Is our prayer now in Jesus' name. All right, welcome again to everyone. Um, yes, Pastor, we're continu continuing on the same subject. I'm gonna ask you to share a screen with me. You may go ahead. All right, thank you, sir. All right. So we continue on the same subject. I'm hoping that we can go a little level deeper. Um, hopefully we can cover what we have in that list there. Um, so I'd like to bring out for us tonight what I'd refer to as some precepts or to identify a specific precept, yes? So reading from the book of Deuteronomy, it says, when Moses had made an end of writing the words of this law in a book until they were finished, that Moses commanded the Levites which bear the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord saying, take this book of the law, put it in the side of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, that it may be there for a witness against thee. And Hebrews 9.19 says, for when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book on all the people. All right, so let's identify a, princi a principle here if you like a precept. So in Deuteronomy 17, it talks about when they become a nation and uh, when they desire a king. So it says, when thou art come into the Lord, come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shall possess it, and shall dwell therein, and shall say, I will set a king over me, that like as all the nations that are about me, thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. Going on to the next verse, in verse 16, it says, But he shall not multiply horses to himself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt to the end that he should multiply horses. For as much as the Lord had said unto you, he shall henceforth return no more that way. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself, but his heart turn not away. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. And it shall be when he sit upon the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priest. And it shall be with him and he shall read therein all the days of his life that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words of this law and these statutes to do them, that his heart be not lifted up above his virgin and that he turn not aside from the commandment, to the right hand or to the left, to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom, he and his children in the midst of Israel. All right, so quick question. Would you agree that this is a precept that was in the law of Moses? Hello. Looks like I was talking to myself. Come again, sir. I don't hear anybody else. I don't hear anybody responding to me at all. So I'm wondering if I'm talking to myself. Oh. Because <laughs> I heard other talking. Repeat the question, please. Uh, the question was Would you agree that this is a precept that was in the law of Moses? Yes. Uh, folks, are you there? I'm not hearing anybody. Claudine fell off. Oh. Pastor? Everybody seemed to be off. Sister Baby? You hearing me, Ella? Yes, I'm hearing you. Okay. I don't hear anybody else, and I saw Claudine fell off, Sister Nelson. Sister Tash? Yes, Sister Tash is here. You're hearing me? I'm hearing you loud and clear. Okay. Sister Debbie, you're hearing me? Sister 
Yes, I am. Okay. When you said precept, what do you mean with that? Can you break it down a little? So a precept is a principle. If you remember, um, Isaiah 28 says, um, we are to study here a little, there a little, precept upon precept, line upon line. Yes. You recall when Jesus was talking yes. about div divorce, he said to them, Moses gave you this precept because of the hardness of your heart. You recall that? Yes, I did. Yes. All right, so is everybody back? Pastor, are you back? Yes, Elder, up here. You were gone, man. Oh, you wanted me? Sorry about that. I was just touching base. Sorry to cut you. I was just touching base with um, Sister Lee, currently there at the hospital with um, yes, with Sister Wilson. Sister Wilson. Yeah. Yes. So herself, Sister Tanisha, and Brother Davis, they're all there. So I was just touching base. Sorry about that. All right. No problem. All right. Brother Marvin, are you there? Sister Claudine is back. Loud and clear. All right. I'm right here, right here. Well, for a moment, I wasn't hearing anybody. Okay, okay. So I was asking if we had, would agree that this was a precept in the law of Moses in regards to how the king should conduct himself while he was in office. Hello? Yeah, that was, I, fell, I fell off a little, so I'm not sure, I'm not following. I, I, I missed that section, so I can't respond to that. I'm trying to catch up. You're there? I'm here, Ellen. You heard my question? Um, could you run it again, please? All right. So I was asking if you agree that this is a precept. Mm -hmm. You're we looking at what, verse 19? Well, it would be from verse 13. Uh, verse 14, laws concerning Israel's kings. Yes. How they should conduct themselves in office. Uh huh. And the question is Would you agree that this is a precept? Um, All right. So let me go back to the text because I, I, sure. it looked like I lost everybody. Yeah, man. I, I got lost. <laughs> so Hebrews 9 19 says, For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law. So these precepts make up the law. And the law was a huge catchphrase for the book of the law which Moses wrote. You agree? Uh -huh. Hello? Yes, yes. So, so we started out by the book that Moses put in the side of the, the um of arc. Side of the ark. Mm -hmm. And in that book was written many precepts, and I was identifying this as one of them, how the king should conduct himself. Okay. So Sister Debbie was asking me what is a precept, and I was reminding her that there was also the writing of divorcement in there, and when Jesus was asked about it, he said, Moses wrote you this precept because of the hardness of your heart. Mm -hmm. Everybody recall that? Mm -hmm. like, yes. I, I feel like I'm. I feel like we're all out tonight. <laughs> True. I'm not sure what's going on. True. Sister Claudine, you're gone again. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. No, I, I'm right here, and I'm right here. I'm not feeling you. I'm not hearing you. So, so you're saying right Jesus here. used the word precept, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. If you notice here in Hebrews, he said, when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law. Right? Uh -huh. And the law, as we know, one was inside and one was in the side of the ark. Right. Am I making too much assumptions that we all know this? Hello? For me, yes. All right, so this will be new to you. Yes, sir. 
Brother Marvin, I'm not hearing you. I'm not sure. I, 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 I don't like when I'm not feeling you, man. I like when everybody talking back, you know. Yes. So, so Ella, what you're saying, and a precept would be like a principle then? Yes. Yes. All right. All right. Was, okay. So maybe I started too much in the deep end, right? <laughs> a principle. Right. So Moses said you said to them, okay, um, all right, you're not happy with this woman, you can divorce her. Jesus was saying, no, Moses wrote you that because of your unforgiving heart, right? Okay. So, okay. so therefore, this is also a precept about how the king should behave when he's in office. You see that? Okay. He's not to multiply horses, he's not to multiply too much silver and gold, and he's not to multiply wives. Wives. Mm -hmm. And he was given a copy of the law to read it while he was on the throne. Okay. In their rebellion, they lost this book of the law. And when Josiah became king, they found it again. Oh. Right? Mm hmm and they read it to the king, and it says in Second Chronicles 34, now it came to pass when the king had heard the words of the law that he rent his clothes. Mm. All right? Now, why am I bringing it up? You remember when they came back from Babylon? Second Chronicles what? So that was Chronicles, uh, Second Chronicles 34. Okay. All right? When they came back from Babylon, there was a huge meeting, as you can see in Nehemiah 8 here, where they read from the book of the law. Mm -hmm. In Nehemiah 8 verse 2, Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and all that could hear with understanding. Right? Okay. Verse 3 said the ears of the people were attentive to the law. And in verse 5, Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, and when he opened it, all the people stood up. Going down to verse 8, he says, So they read the book in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. Okay. So here's what I want to put to our attention. That the law was their book of education. Okay. Is that a fair statement, Pastor? Gone again? Yes, it is. It was their book of education. Uh -huh. Paul asserted this to Timothy. He said, but continue the only things which thou hast learned and has been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which is able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Then he goes on to tell him, all scripture is given by inspiration of God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And the man of God mm -hmm. may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So can you see my question? I can. You can. What does the book of the law set of dreams? Let me, let me change that. It should be say, right? Mm-hmm. Is that Claudine? Right. Yes, I'm here. What's the next question? What is the precept regarding visions and dreams in the book of the law? That's correct. Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. You know the precept? What is the precept regarding visions? What is the principle regarding visions? In the book of the law, you must All become right. God. All right, let, let us go through them. No? What what are what are they in which which book of the law? No. Oh, that these are. Numbers. Numbers, February 3, know the man 
Moses was very meek above all the, all the men which were upon the face of the earth. So uh, Miriam and, and, and Aaron were bad mouthing Moses, mm -hmm. yes? mm -hmm. saying that God had spoken by them as well. Numbers 12, verse 2, and they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath mm. he not spoken also by us? And it says, The Lord heard it. And then it says, The Lord suddenly spake, on, spake suddenly unto Moses, Come out, each tree, unto the tabernacle of the congregation. Mm. Yes, and the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. Listen to what the Lord utters now. Sister Claudine, read it for us. And uh, that's what, no, verse six. And he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. Let's go to Deuteronomy. And then he, the seven Let's says, go to Deuteronomy. Oh, my servant Moses is not so, what does that mean? You turn on every 13 3. Yeah, let's go to the turn. Hold on. No, but there's a sentence up, um, below 12. I'd want to read it to see what it is saying. Because then by servant Moses is not so. What is that? Is he not a, a, a prophet who is faithful? Well, he, in goes, he goes further to tell you what he's going to do with this particular man. Because this man was a special man to him. And you know that he, he but refers he wasn't to his a prophets. prophet. No, but he refers to his prophets as his servants as well. My servants, okay. the prophets. He, he refers to them as such. Mm -hmm. But he said, in, in this case with this one, I'm going to talk to him out to mouth. And clearly we saw, I mean, numerous occasions where this man had dialogue, direct, straight up dialogue with God, right? Amen. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that. So here is some more expanding on the principle, Sister Claudine, in Deuteronomy. Mm-hmm. We've read this over and over and over. I'm just reiterating it. Okay. Yeah? Sorry, yes, sir. You would agree? Amen. Sister Claudine? Yes, I'm, I'm reading. I'm trying to, to, to figure what you're saying. It, so hold if on. You, if you were on the, if you lived during the time of King David, what would be your point of reference? Well, this has been read. What would be the scriptures scripture? for you? <clears throat> what would be what would be your scriptures? Well, just as we read, you know, that um um in in um here in Deuteronomy is saying if there arise among you a um among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give it the sign or wonder, but it says, and the sign or the wonder come to pass. So I'm just reading to say a lot of persons predict or said a dream and then it come to pass. Where you, know, you notice, you notice, you notice, Sister Claudine, that clearly all the others, they're not recorded mm -hmm. here. All of those who, who would not meet this criteria. Mm -hmm. But I asked you a question. If you had lived in the time of King David, who was the second king of Israel, what would have been your Bible and what would you be reading? I'm not sure. Why? The law of Moses. The law. This it would, it would have law been, of Moses. It would have been whatever Moses I am wrote. But that's what you just read. Mm -hmm. so, so that, that, would, that be, would be that would be exactly the it then. So that, mm -hmm. so that would be law for you. That would be the precept for you. Okay. Okay. That Fair would be enough. the precept for you. Mm -hmm. That would be the law for you. Mm -hmm. So this is just one of the many. There's a precept in there, you see? Which if I jealous and believe, say, my wife is cheating, I can carry her to the priest and him have a check when he used to run for her to see if it goes up. You did you know that? <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, you know <laughs> Did you but know back, that? But then, but then the priest was out as, as like a gardener. So everything that, that um he would perhaps sort out 
Okay. <laughs> no. So by the time we got to King Solomon, he made it clear that there's another type of dreaming. You seeing it? Ecclesiastic 5 7 for any multitude of dreams and many words, there's also diverse vanities, but fear thou God. And when you read in Deuteronomy, really, God is saying, if this man come to you and tell you dreams, right? What he wants to know is whether or not you will serve him, right? In verse 30, Deuteronomy 34, you shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments, obey his voice. He shall serve him and cleave unto him. And here, Solomon repeats it, but in another way, he says, but fear thou God. So don't fear those dreams which have been vanities. So what are vanities? You recall what we said they were? So Job says, surely God will not hear vanity, neither will the Almighty regard it. Psalm 12, 2 said, speak vanity, everyone with his neighbor, and flattering lips, and with a double heart do they speak. Right? Second King says, they rejected his statutes and his covenant that he made with their fathers, and his testimony which he testified against them. And they followed vanity and became vain and went after the heathen that were around about them and concerning whom the Lord had changed them that they should not do like them. And really, folks, you know, I was in a shop this morning, Pastor, before we went to visit that place this morning. And um, the lady said she won because she buy the number 25. And um, she said she dreamt last night that she saw a man. I can't remember it was an old man. And she went and by her number. But guess what? The number that she wrote down, the person misinterpreted the 25 or 28. <laughs> so she didn't win anything this morning. So she was deflated. That agreement dream come true. She said she dreams the old man. <laughs> so what and she's doing. So what she's using is numerology, Sister Angika, old man is 25. No, that's what I realized, because I'm, I'm, um, I realized that they said no, um, there are rakes and, and stuff in them. Yeah. There are two gentlemen in my space as well. So Ezekiel 39 said, my hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies. Jeremiah 51, 18, they are vanity, the work of errors. They're lies. All right. And it goes on and on. Um, in Deuteronomy 32, they have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. Yes? Um, in Psalm 31, he says, I hated them that regarded lying, but I trust in God. Mm. So we have to choose between vanities and trusting in God. Mm. Now, I want to just go down now. And kind of look at what Jeremiah had to say about certain types of dreamers. Mm. Yes? Yes, sir. It says, I've heard what the prophet said. I'm starting at verse 25. That prophet said, lies in my name saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Sister Claudine. I am Sister listening. Claudine. You're listening? <laughs> I'm listening. So if it, it, if, if it not true what it is, Lies. It's vanity. vanity. Yes. Vanity. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? They are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. Which thing to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have gotten my name, forgotten my name for Baal. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that he hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, said the Lord? Verse 30. Therefore, behold, I am against the prophet, said the Lord, that steal my words ever run from his neighbor. I am against the prophet, said the Lord, that use their tongues and say, he hath said. Mm, I believe so. But Elder, is there a passage of scripture that says 
he will not hold them guiltless, something like that? Um, I that, think that's that, in regard to those who are ignorant, I think. I, I, I know the text, but I can't recall the context of that text. But Jeremiah 23, 32. Behold, I'm against them that prophesy false dreams, Sister Claudine. <laughs> yeah, that is false dreams. Yes. And not only that, and tell them mm -mm. and cause my people to err by their lies and their likeness. Yet I sent them not nor commanded them, therefore they shall not profit these people at all, said the Lord. Who sent them? The, pass, the, the, the scripture that talks about try the spirit, is that in, that's in Proverbs, right? Proverbs? No. No, yeah. sis. No, no. Sis, you have your... your hold, on, <laughs> hold on, sister, Angie. Sister Claudine. Yes, I'm, I'm right here. We have a truth. You have a truth. The either false or the true. But, but I'm not saying they're damn, dear. I'm not saying no, you know, Elder. My, my only question is, do people dream dreams now that are not lies or that are not false? I don't know, Sister Claudine. I haven't been checking them out. I'm sorry. But what I mean, if, hold on, Pastor. But yes. if we have enough time, Sister Claudine, I'm going to recall for you something that happened in 2018 Okay, which were premised on dreams and, that, and there was time setting and um, prophesying. Mm -hmm. And it turned out to be false, Sister Claudia. False, false, false. Yeah. All right. And yet you have the opposite. Which is? Yeah. Well. Not that I can't put my finger on, on anyone, okay, okay. but you have a lot of persons. Well, not they, not that they are not persons of vanity, but I'm saying a lot of times they tell you that they dream, decide they dream, but and it come to pass. Really? So what about which principle? Which principle they're using? Is the one who say if you know you know come straight, if you know go so you go near so. I don't know. Uh, that is what I'm trying to figure out. I'm asking you. Because that's what we always hear. If you know, go check on here, so or don't I, walk straight. I don't know. Maybe, maybe Pastor can help me. But <laughs> teacher, I can understand the dilemma of Sister Claudia. Which is? Because what I am seeing is that Brother Marvin has a word that he used a lot. That, that is conflate. I am sensing, Brother Teacher, that you are conflating all dreams to be false. True, but, right. but looking at the series of texts that you have looked at, uh -huh. there is a strong inference that yes. the fact that there are prophets of lies yes. that turn away the people from God would yes. tell me that there's a strong inference that there are true prophets, prophets yes. who would lead his people to his word. There's no That's question. So to come to the conclusion that all dreams are to be thrown through the window. I think that is what is causing the dilemma in the sister's mind. And maybe that's, others who are not even speaking. That's correct. That's correct. So, so, Sister Claudine. Yes, Elder. You had one drama last week about a dream. Not true? Uh, yeah, but... That, hold, that, on, that, hold on, hold on, sis. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That must where be nightmare. That's night stallion. No, no, but, but, but where would you stand on that? If she comes and claims that's the position, and she's not the only one, right? I'm just saying... Um, my question is, mm -hmm. should, what should I have done? What should I have done? Well, you, you can't do anything, Elder. You just, you just give a listening ear and that's it. There's nothing you can do. Okay. Okay. So, so when do you know that the dream is false? And if it is false, what does the Lord say we mustn't do? Yeah, what well, we shouldn't do. He said, which caused my people to forget my name by them, Jesus, which they tell every man to his neighbor. So if it is false, aren't you trying to um, get people's attention by telling them this false thing? Yeah. 
If the thing is false, brethren, why are we repeating it? Why are we telling it? Could you go back to the text that says, if there is a prophet, I, the Lord, will reveal myself to him? Could I go back yeah. to that text? Um, oh, that is, that is numbers. Yes. Uh, yes, this one, mm -hmm. this one, Pastor. Yes. Mm -hmm. It says, and he said, hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. This is authenticating dreams and visions. So, so what I'm saying, brother teacher, and don't think that I'm trying to contradict you. I think your conclusions that you have arrived at from the very first week that you touch this subject are my conclusions as well. But I have a problem when we conflate all dreams and prophets. In, in other words, if Ellen White were present with us today through whom we believe God spoke in visions and dreams, your approach would mean we would have to throw her through the window. That's my contention. I don't think um, you're being fair because I have also gone through what is a test of a prophet, Pastor. We have. Uh, we have gone through that. So if we have already defined, hold on, Pastor. If we have already defined a prophet mm -hmm. and what are those characteristics that are consistent with a prophet? Because those are, that is the basis on which her virgin accepted her at the time. She passed the test. But, but you're not putting your ones to the test, brother teacher. You're flinging them away. Putting what? You, you, the, 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 <laughs> what I see <laughs> from your approach is that you're not willing to even test any of them. If they come with you to a dream, you're flinging them at the same time. So, so what I'm hearing you say. So would you that... agree with me that we need to test them? If somebody comes to me with a vision or a dream for me. Uh -huh. <laughs> I should listen to this one and put him to the test. Would you agree with me? Or just throw him away? If you want, if that is your approach, Pastor, that is yours, that's not mine. No, but you're not answering my question, brother teacher. But I, I would like to ask a question. Yes. In today's day, day and age, do, do we have dreamers? Do we have prophets? That is a question I love to we ask. Have, we have dreamers, many, Sister Claudine, but I don't know about the profit part of it. Do we have, <laughs> right, do we have profits in today's year? That we have, I said, we have, I, I answer, I say we have dreamers, many. Yeah, question again, does the Bible put a timeline on to say, after this period, there will be no more dreamers, there will be, be no more profits. So anybody come to you, they are just vanity, do not listen to them. Or it gives you um, a cr um, criteria as yes, to. Yes, Mr. Claudine, we went through that already. The exactly. test of a prophet. Right. So, so, how many of them? So, hold on. Did you know what is the test of a prophet? Is? If you don't know, what you're going to test? No, but, but, Are you going to accept everybody so, who comes? Sorry, but brother. But if you to throw, throw away everybody. No, sister. No, sister. Sis, sister, I'm asking you. If uh -huh. you don't have a test, are you going to go accept a vision if you're not able to test whether or not this person is a prophet? Well, the Bible says it is. Um, if it so comes to pass. That? Well, it's, if it comes to pass. That's not the only one, sis. But, well, a teacher. Yes, sir. I think the question that Sister Claudine poses mm -hmm. is a very pertinent question. Mm -hmm. And I want you to understand because I asked the question similar and I'm not sure if you had gotten where I was going. When we go to the book of Corinthians, mm -hmm. Paul outlines for us some gifts that are given to the church yeah. via the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. God gives his spirit to the church and the spirit mm -hmm. gives gifts to the members. And Paul says, these gifts will remain in the church till we become perfect. In other words, till there needs to be no church on earth. Now right. what the so, sister so, is asking. So, so for example, Pastor. Yes, brother. If you, if you were to go to the gift of tongues, the gift of tongues is a plenty. 
But when you when you put it against the Bible standard, we now have to make a distinction between what is gibberish and what is language. I agree with you. So I am but, suggesting but don't just isolate isolate tongues. Isolate no, tongues no, that I, give I, they I, call prophet to. No, I isolated tongues. Yes. Because tongues is one of the gifts. Prophecy yes. is another. Prophecy is another one. Say, and I'm saying the way you test the tongues one is uh -huh. by testing it with the word. Is it a language or is it gibberish? But that's not the focus of the question. The question is... No, it is the same do, focus. Does it the is... gift of tongue still function in the church today? What would your answer be to that question? Well, I have... The yes only, or no? I don't know if the gift... I don't know if anybody have any gift of tongue. What I know is that people speak different languages and that is used in the promulgation of the gospel. But I don't know about anybody getting up like on the day of Pentecost and everybody speaking different languages in one place like that. And Paul also goes further to say that you don't have the gift of tongue without an interpreter. Right. I agree with you on all of that. So, so, so the so, gift of evangelism or evangelists. But you asked all of that today. last week and I answered you, sir. I answered right. you. Yes. So does the yes. gift of prophecy exist so, today, brother teacher? Sir, you have not gift, answered that one. No, the, hold, hold on. I am saying that the gift of prophecy, or better said, there's a difference between we would say the spirit and the gift of prophecy. The gift of prophecy is the spirit to give. And if somebody claims that they have it, then we have to test it. Now, I keep hearing this question, do we still have prophets today? Well, if him come forward, he will be put to the test. And so far, all of who have come forward, in far as I know, in my lifetime, they have been put to the test and then false. I would like that's anybody a, to show me any, hold on, I would like yeah. anybody to show me any in the past hundred years who has been tested and proven. You can't show me none. No, let me say this, Pastor. Yes, sir. You know, there was a period when God never spoke to no prophet before John the Baptist came on the scene. How long was it? Tell us. 400 years. Not a word to a prophet. Between Malachi so and John. Person, so the only person who determines when that is going to happen is who? The spirit. So as they come, we shall test them. Well, we agree with you, and I'm happy that you have said it out clear, but because you have been shying away from the question. No, but you see, Pastor, you have to follow but the study. As the we, teacher, I want you, you to have be to follow clear the with study. us. You have clear to follow us, the study, teacher. Pastor. Pastor, you have to follow the study. We went through the prophet thing already. Yeah, we went right. through that. Maybe, maybe I am distracted, brother teacher. We went through the test of a prophet before. Yeah. So now we're looking at dreams, which is how God is speaking to prophets. So you come with your dream and you're not a prophet. You're not pass, no test. What do you expect my response to be, sir? So let's go to Joel now. Because Joel uh, is the... Good, jo good, good, night, good night, Elder Sylvester. Yes, Brother Henry. Um, happy Sabbath, everyone. Yes, sir. Uh, could an individual in this time that is not a prophet, get a dream and it is from God, how would we know? And why I ask the question is that Nebuchadnezzar get a dream. And maybe I'm answering what I'm asking because it's come back to the same thing. So if somebody that is not even a believer in God, like we go to church and profess to be a Christian, get a dream and come to me. Then if I am living up to God and that vision or that dream is from God, like the text that you use from the first night, I think it, I don't remember them, but um, it was two texts you use. So it shows that we're going to have to go back to the word. So if there's not a living prophet, we'll always have to go back to the word to test whatever the person is saying. It not necessarily mean that the person who comes with a dream today is a prophet, 
but they could have gotten a message. And the confirmation is that they had to come to a believer in Christ, which they have already come, and now we're going to have to bring them to the word. Why I'm saying that, are making such statement. I'm not sure if you're saying when somebody come with a dream, we must always turn them away. Because I was the one who said that I if, that. if you're, you're that thing, but I'm not I'm not saying that. Right, because your first two texts when you started out, not last Friday, but the Friday before, was saying all must be tested by the standard of God. But I can remember, I don't know if it's the same night later down, it was Brother Sheldon, I think that says, um, I don't throw the dream or something. And I, I'm not sure where his mind was. But it seems to have one or two other brethren thinking, no, okay, you can throw away every dream. I don't think that's the standard. You, no, that's not the standard you start with. Even if you had forgotten, which I don't think you do, this the standard that you start with. All things must be tested by the word of God. So if there is not a living prophet, the spirit of God has already spoken through his prophets and it is chronicled in the Bible. And we're going to test all these in prayer, in approaching the Holy Spirit to see it. That's my understanding so far. So, um, thank you, thank you, Brother Henry, because uh, you know maybe I've been at pains to say that, um, but you know, I hear what I keep hearing is that people put in the the dream before the prophet, and it seems to me you can't put one before the you can't put the dream before the prophet. And even as you as you said, if there's no profit to validate it, what are you going to do with it? If it can't be validated from the word of God, what are you going to do with it, sir? You're going to have to keep it, sir. You keep seeking the Lord, and if you're not getting any answer, you, you have to leave it alone. So what are you used to test it? The word. Oh, okay. By the spirit. Okay. Yes. Okay. The living word. And, and most of those, most of those dreams, you know, as I said. It has to be tested. Um, I'm, I'm very, brother Henry. I'm very skeptical. I can understand. I I'm can understand. very, very skeptical. Okay. Now, okay. I want to go on to Joel two twenty eight and twenty nine because this is the text that people invoke for their dreams. Now, I want to read. Very clearly says, shall come to pass that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and your handmaids, in those days I will pour out my spirit. So of all the things that have been said here, the only emphasis is on the dreams and the visions. Right? So when we look here, and brother, brother, what's his brother, brother Henry, you're gone? No, I'm here, I'm here, Elder. I want to engage you a little bit. Yes. If the prophet said that you're going to see dreams and see vision, right? Right. Let me ask you, if you wanted a reference for dreams, where would you go to find dreams that you must see? As for me, Based on what the Bible is saying here. You're going to come to me? No, I'm going to go to the word. You're going to go to the word? Yes, in prayer. I'm going, to, I'm going to pray and go to the word. Okay. So it says he's going to pour out his spirit. Okay. Mm. And they shall dream dreams and young men shall see vision. And he said, I'm going to pour out my spirit. As a matter of fact, in the pouring out of his spirit, one of the results we're looking for is that they're going to prophesy. And prophesy doesn't only mean foretelling. It also means to preach. Not true. Right, right, right. So this part of his vision, we are being told, one, he's going to pour out his spirit. He's going to cause them to preach. And they're going to be seeing these visions that were presented before. That's right. All right. So let's look for the fulfillment of what this prophet had to say. So we're going to go straight to Acts. So... You know that to pour, he said he's going to pour out his spirit, right? And that term is also used, in, you know, he said like he would pour it out like rain in, in Jeremiah, right? No, so we're in Acts 1. 
And Jesus is saying to them, wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard of me. And we know one of the promises that Jesus made was what? Sending the Holy Spirit. Sending the Holy Spirit. So I'm saying, for John truly baptized with water, but he shall be baptized with Holy Ghost not many days hence. So we come to chapter two, and then we had Pentecost. And we know Pentecost is one of the seven feast days, right? Right, right. Right. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and then filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So right here, so they're not a dream. They must speak with tongues. Agree? Yeah, fully agreed. So we know the rest of it. It said people there were hearing their own language. And it was asserted that they were drunk. Yes? These That's men are right. full of new wine. Acts 2 verse 13, right? Hello? Amen, amen, amen. All right, so we're in verse 14 now. What did Peter stand up to do, sir? He declared that we are not all drunk. Okay. Not only that. And he, 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 he stated as to why it was. No, no man, you missed the highlight. He okay. lifted up his voice. Okay. Right. He lifted up his voice like when my pastor preached. And then he goes on to say to them, what you're witnessing here is what Joel said. You're going to hear preaching now. That's right. Not only, not only was he preaching, he was taking them back to the vision of Joel. Preach it. The people around did not see the vision, but now their eyes were to be open to see this vision. He said, see it come to pass. This is what Joel had talked about. See it now. John the Baptist, the Bible tells you he came and he was speaking what the other men were speaking. He never dreamed nothing. And he said, on your, my servants and on your handmaids, I will pour out my spirit in those, in those days. But yet people invoke it only for visions and dreams. And he said, look, you're going to prophesy. You're going to preach. Now, my argument has always been better, Henry. That all these people who dream up to now, they now begin to see the dreams and the visions in the word of God. Yeah, I, I really can understand um, what you're saying, Elder. Well, my... My view is that you're saying as people of God, we are to stay straight, you know, practice and live by the word, you know. So we are so sharp, or we ought to be so sharp by the spirit to discern when someone is coming with um, saying they have a dream or a vision, but their you thing. believe Revelation, you believe the second part of Revelation 13? What, is, what did it say? I'm not remembering now. It talk about the two horn beasts. Okay. Which, is, which will cause all both small and great to receive a mark. Right. Not true. Right. Not a right. chip, am I right? <laughs> no, not a chip. Not a but chip. what did the vision say? Did the vision say it's a, it's a chip or when you go through the vision, you recognize that you will be forced to worship the beast. Right. Your, your Is it a vision? Yeah. So how do you see that vision? Is that a vision that you should see? No. N no? You sure? Come again, brother, 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 brother. Maybe I don't understand what you're saying. If you don't understand it, you can't see it. When we talk to one of you, say, but you see what I'm saying, not true. You see me? Meaning, do you understand what I'm saying, correct? Right. 
So do you understand Revelation 13, second half? No, I Not don't. Like this. Huh? No, I don't. You don't? No. So you don't see that? Well, brother teacher. Yes, sir. And I, I want to be careful how I say this because yes. with due respect, sir. Yes, sir. I am not seeing your interpretation of Joel too. Okay, that's fine. Give me yours. Your interpretation seems to be, to me, to be an imposition. No, you'll give me yours. Bring your Bible. I'll Sh go back to Joel too, brother teacher. Go yeah, man, scroll I'll back up to Joel too for me. I'll cut my screen. Eh? I'll cut my screen. I was saying, bring no, your Bible. Go back up to I'll Joel. Go back up to Joel too. Yes, man. And I, I don't want this to be turned out into a punching match. I, I just want clarification. Mm -hmm. And I think there are others on who need to understand what the scriptures are saying. Mm -hmm. Joel 2. It shall come to pass afterward mm -hmm. that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Yes? Your old men shall dream dreams. It didn't tell me your old men will see the dreams that Daniel saw. Your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see visions. How do you find in that, that those dreams and visions are what Daniel and the other prophets have right, already hold seen? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm going to open up my Bible. Hold on, Pastor. Hold on, okay. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You see, Joel 2, verse 1. You see, this is where when you forget the principles of Bible interpretation, you get mired like that. Because my question to you is, let's go and find out what the Bible calls dream. I'm, I'm trying to open my, my, my um, e-sword here. All right. Um, we were at Joel 2. We were at Joel 2, and we were at verse 28. Let me just, let me just put this up back. Uh, sorry. All right, so we're now at Joel 2, um, verse 28, right, Pastor? You, hey, Pastor? He's gone? Sorry? I didn't get that. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna look for this. If the Bible said they're gonna dream dreams, so I'm looking for the word dreams. You ready? You pastor? I'm not hearing you. I'm not hearing you. Hey, 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 I'm following going? you. It's a little difficult sometimes when I'm opening up the mic. But I'm with you. Go ahead. Okay. So you will agree that if the prophet is talking about dreams in the Bible here, where I must go and look to find out what this word means? I'm not, I'm not hearing. All right. Anybody else want to respond? The Bible. This is Alicia. Sister Lisa? Yes, Brother Sylvester. Hi, how are you doing? So nice to hear you. I'm good. Right. Thank you, Sister Lisa. That's that. I, I agree with your answer. I'm, so I'm asking, if the Bible said dream dreams, which dreams I'm going to look for? Is the one the Bible talk? Is it the ones the one the Bible is talking about? Yes, I think so. It would have to Brother be... Henry. Brother, who is this? Who? Yes, Angie. It would have to be. Brother Henry. Yes, 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 Elder. Still here. Are you there? Yes, according, I am. According to the principle of study, if I'm looking for dreams, where am I going to look? The Bible, sir. In the Bible. But, but Elder, you know, um, that's you and that's me. But the, 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 the person that lives in the community, that it's a dream. They're not going go to, oftentimes they're not going to go to somebody down the road. They're going to think about somebody in the church. But that's what the Bible calls man's tradition. But listen, 
man's tradition, the person that does not have a relationship with God, oftentimes will not know how to go into the word and search. So they're going to have to go to somebody that, is, that profess to have a relationship that, with God. And that's what I'm saying. What do we do when that person comes? Whether it's a false dream or a real dream, we're going to have to take them to the word and we're going to have to try to keep them under our wings because no. God could have been asking for them to come to us, even with a false dream, so that we can help point them to him. That is one as well, um, Elder. So, um, Elder so, because but then again, they're going to um, search a particular um, particular church. So, so hold, hold. of that one. So hold on, hold on. Hold on. I just want I just want to clarify because I'm responding to Pastor's question and I'm I'm giving him a serious response here. And I'm gonna say if the Bible says dreams and if the Bible says visions, how do I go out of the scope of what the Bible is talking about? I want an explanation to that. No, because everybody been invoking this and using this, and I'm saying to folks, listen. If the Bible speaks of dreams, I'm going to have to look to where the Bible is speaking. Okay, brother teacher, so let me respond. Let me respond. Because I I, I, what I, wait, I kept silent because I wanted to see your response. So since you're yes. drawing me in, let me, let me respond. Yes. Brother teacher, um, yes, I agree with you that if we're going to find a definition for the dream, that Joel talks about, we have to look in the scriptures for a definition of that dream. What I cannot see is that, and I'm getting from you, tell me if I am wrong, that if for, for Joel 2 to be fulfilled, those today who dream dreams will see the dreams that the prophets have had of old. Those are the dreams that they must see when they go to bed are the visions they see when they have their encounter. Am I correct to interpret it that way? No, you're not correct. Isn't that what you're saying, Brother Keaton? No, that's not what I'm saying. So what are you saying? So explain that's, the thing, That's not what I'm saying. Let, let me, let me, let me, let me so tell you what I'm saying. So I will keep quiet then and you Hold just on, explain what you say. Because sometimes let, I think let, you let, fail to what, explain clearly what, enough. Sir. You, know, you leave people to what, draw a conclusion and no, that... But I, that allows people to draw a conclusion that you may, you may not intend it. So if you just give us but the I thing, did. I showed you the fulfillment in Acts. And um, what's his name? Um, Peter pointed you back to this vision that Joel spoke of. That's where he pointed you back. He said, listen, see it being fulfilled here. So he referenced this vision. He said, see it being fulfilled here. <laughs> And that's why when we read from early writings last week, we read where Ellen White pointed you in the fulfillment of visions or dreams. He, she showed you, what was his name? Peter's trance. So he, here's, 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 the, here's the thing, Pastor. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. If I am going to Go with what Joel is saying. And I'm looking at the dreams in the Bible. Because that's where I am going to look when I'm looking for Joel. Mm -hmm. When I'm looking for what Joel is saying. The Bible is replete with them. And I better go see them. I better go understand them. And that's why I asked brother, 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 when I said to brother Henry, brother Henry. Do you understand the vision in the book of John, in, Revel in, in, in the book of Revelation, in Revelation 13, the second part? Or is the mark of the beast a chip they're going to put in your hand, or is it talking about worship? So now, put that in light of Joel. Yes. So you are interpreting Joel to, to mean yes. that when I come to an understanding of the mark of the beast in John in Revelation 13. That's the dream that the old men will have and the vision that the young men will have that Joel is speaking about, an understanding of the prophecies. If you can show me otherwise, I'll accept it. Oh, okay. 
If you can show me from the Bible, otherwise I will heartily accept it. Well, my only challenge is that I'm not seeing that interpretation in Joel too. And okay. I, I just want you to show me how you get there, how you see it there. I can show it you shall any other come way. to pass in the last days that your young men shall dream dreams. Pastor, pastor. It didn't say pastor. your young men shall interpret. Pastor, images. pastor. And respectfully, I'm saying that, brother teacher. I will, and, listen. I will and listen. Respectfully, I say to you that the wise men saw the vision. They saw them. And that's why they that's why they came to Jerusalem asking. Because as, as we are told in the spirit of prophecy, they were studying the prophecies. But the people who should have been seeing those visions and seeing those dreams, they didn't see it. And the Messiah came and they saw him not, they knew him not. Because they failed, they failed. They failed. Elder. Who is this, Brother Marvin? It is interesting to note that when you look at Moses, for instance, Moses was a prophet, am I right? Yes, sir. Did Daniel saw the vision of Moses? Yes, he did. He did saw Zion yeah. see saw the same vision as Moses. Yes, did yes. Ezekiel have the same vision. Visions of the future. Yes, they all did. So all the prophets saw the same what? Vision. Some in more detailed than the Come other. On. Mm -hmm. But all nonetheless, even to the time of Peter, all saw the same vision, including Joel. That is just my take on Joel so far. No comment on any other aspect at this time. Well, I, I don't have a problem, even if somebody doesn't see it. But based on the rules of Bible interpretation, if the Bible tell me about dreams, I can't go outside of the Bible, go look for it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, folks, I can't. Have I lost everybody? Mm -hmm. Sister Claudine, me lose you now for good? No, we're still here. But, no, but, it's, uh, yeah, thank you, Sister Lisa. Is this the no, cloud? I'm, you know, I'm here. I'm here. I just here, want I'm to know here. if I've lost you now for good. No, man, I'm here. I'm here. I'm not, you know, you're not, you're, you haven't lost me. I'm right here. So I haven't lost you. If Joel is telling me about dreams, I have no choice but to look in the Bible. You agree? Correct. Now, if anybody can tell me where else to go and look, as I've said, I'll shut up and keep quiet. But I don't see myself coming out of the scope of looking at these dreams and visions. The only way I know that there is a sanctuary up in heaven and, and there's an ark up there is because I've seen it in John's vision. In Revelation chapter 11. And in chapter 4 and 5, I can see the lampstand and I can see the table of shoe bread, which is a throne. Ella, yes, sir. Huh? You have to talk up a little because rain is falling on the roof so that it, it kind of competing with you. To give this one a little, a little more punch, as you mentioned, the sanctuary. When the sanctuary doctrine was, um, came out, what confirmed it? The sanctuary doctrine? Yes. Which part? Before you mean after 1844? After 1844. They had to, uh, well, it was confirmed by um, what's his name? Crozier, who said he got a vision and they went back to the Bible to search. Hiram Hudson. Hudson, yes. They went back yes. to the Bible to search. So yes. therefore, watch watch me now. As a matter of fact, you saw it, and they all collaborated that it is the same vision that John saw. Mm -hmm. 
So in other words, the vision he got was the same vision that John saw. Mm -hmm. And he's stating the vision as if, as a matter of fact, he experienced that same vision, seeing the very same thing that John saw, which even Moses saw when God said unto him, let them make me a sanctuary. Same thing. All right, we've had a long run on that one. <laughs> We've had a long run on that one. All right, so I see we're at 923. Um, Brother Marvin, I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna go to David Gates, but I'm going to just read for you something the servant of the Lord said about a woman who was having visions in Germany. Everybody- 823, baby, 823. 823, we're supposed to finish at 830. Mm -hmm. Not 923. Oh, sorry, it's 923 for Debbie. Right, Sister Debbie? A loser? No, Brother Sylvester. All right, Sister Debbie. Clear. All right. So I'm going to read about a vision here. This is in Second Selected Messages. She says here, a question has been brought to me concerning the attitude that we should take toward the work of a sister in Germany who claims to have vision. The word given to me by the Lord in the past night is that God does not direct his people to look to this sister for counsel. If we should encourage this sister in the work she thinks she is called to do and in the messages she bear, much confusion will be caused. The Lord has not given her the work of saying that this one shall do and what that one shall do. He says to his people, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heaven laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn of me, for I am meek and lonely in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God and give it to all men liberal and abraded not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that wavered is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and toss. But let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Teach the people to see God individually for guidance, to study the scriptures, to count together humbly, prayerfully, and with living faith. But do not encourage this sister to think that the Lord has given her messages for the people. The light given me regarding this case is that should this sister be encouraged to think that she has been given messages for others, the result will be disastrous and the sister would be in danger of losing her soul. My message to the sister is walk humbly with God and look to him for yourself. God has not given you the work of pointing out the duty of others. But you can be a helper if you are a sincere Christian seeking to encourage others and not claiming supernatural revelations. Any comments, Bertrand? Any comments? Any comments? You could go back to the reading a little elder that you just read, the one in more um, full of bold. Um, Which one? Yeah, the right one... there. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah. Teach the people to seek God individually for guidance. I fully agree with that. That's the kind of statement I was trying to make earlier. Um, sometimes it sounds as if we are saying, turn away the person and don't associate with them no nobody, um, said, nobody said that sir i'm sorry not, no, I, 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 well it's so like, like uh -huh. that way to me it's either the first night uh -huh. or the second night uh -huh. nobody said that nobody, nobody El, said elder that. sylvester elder sylvester what i will do for you i will go back and play the first step and give you in the minutes of time wherever it allotted when a statement was made that is suggesting that. So I'm saying we ought to, this is my belief, when someone comes to us, sometimes they need, from looking back from that night, sometimes they just need someone to talk to them and guide them and show them that they must have studied the word for themselves. And as I say, I will look back I will play back that tape and, and, and pass on to you the time when statements were made that insinuate 
that kind of suggestion that I've just made. All right, anybody else? Anybody else? I'm so connecting. Okay, I'm sorry, you want me to keep it there? No, man, I'm, I'm, I'm agreeing totally. And that the thing with me with these um, sharings, they're new to me. Yes. Seriously new. And honestly, I wrestle a lot of times to wonder why is there an uh, debate at times about stuff that where the Lord has his thing to be saying. Because in due time, he's going to be having it revealed for clarity. My, my fascination is right now to know that I'm living in a time frame where he's about to come and it's not the second time, it's coming now forever. And I've not been privy to stuff that like these readings, and I, I honestly right now I'm looking at, um, I'm listening to some of them on audio on, on YouTube. And I have been asking a lot, a lot of questions pertaining to all of these things. And the wrestling is if you're going where God is in charge, he is, he doesn't want when he speaks any second or third backup, why is it that we would be having issues as to what you would be saying in any which way? Elder, um, Brother Henry shared a while ago and, and with this um, read, um, reading a while ago, he said to um, teach the people to seek the Lord. I, with this part, I'm understanding what he's saying when he said people in the community who are not, 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 um, this is not their custom, right? Where, where they would um, get dreams or visions that they would have and they're looking for somebody to, um, they would search for somebody to, to, to explain it to them. I've personally had um, customers of mine come to me because of me going to church and they know that they, one, one person came and she said she know that I'm a praying person. And that's, a, that's the, 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 the point where she would meet me at. And she's sharing a deep situation that happened to her where um, she got, had a miscarriage. And all I said to her, look, I will help you to pray as to what the Lord want, what, um, have done or what allowed to do. And that's basically where I would send her. So I understand when he's saying that they, they, they would come to us or they would seek somebody out as to who would be in prayer or in church at a certain realm where it's at, like a respect to say, explain this for me. So when he's saying, you know, he looked for them. When she's saying, teach them how to see, train up the child in the way they should go, come up in that area where the first place you go is on your knees to have that one-on-one -on -one for clarity. So I am just blown out of my skin when I see these readings and these sharings. And I am just in awe as to say, if these people have put these things together for just ear play or just to, to even sister white right i have not, i've had books around the house years ago in the family house where um steps to christ i never i never give it the time of day i never gave it the time of day and when i listen back to referrals to it and other books that are there and i'm like then so i don't understand then why is this debate so strong in this way? Is that I'm says or I'm not says so? And if he said not so, and it's held in a big realm, who are you to stand and say, he said so, and he didn't, and you don't feel like you're going to be held guilty, right? So when I'm looking at this and then I'm hearing her give testimonies of live, real, I've seen um, the movie, and I would watch that thing over and over and I would pray about it and I would question the Lord and I would talk about um, with him with, with stuff in it. And I'm like, then why is there a certain question a certain way? If he said in John, if he was, he's not from earth, he only talks of heavenly things. And, and, and when I'm listening to the sharings of the group members, I'm learning that um, the scripture is saying, in the literal where Moses and, 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 and some of um, the disciples had him in their, in their space. Last night, yesterday I was listening to 
to John being read to the part where Jesus, they were in his midst and Peter had his, his head on Jesus's chest. And all I said to the Lord is that's how close I want to be with you. And when I listened, I said, mighty God, can you believe Lord, they were so close in your space and to know that they had you literally and know we have to use faith to touch you. And we have to still trust him. Like th doubtful Thomas, he wanted to see to believe. And he said, blessed are those that have not seen but yet believe. And we are in the times when we have to trust into that place. And with Daniel for the last um, quarterly that we had, he wants us to get to the place of trusting him completely without question. And that's what I see coming out in this. So when she said, teach, it, teach the people how to see the Lord, that's the first place we run to when we need clarity for things. That's where I have been until I'm right here now. I have no, I, I was telling that David last week, last Sabbath, that all I had with me was my Bible and my knees. And here I am sitting and listening and being in awe and blown out of my skin as to some stuff that I'm like, God, seriously? So I'm in appreciation of what I'm hearing and I'm learning and I'm getting to understand. And I am really, it caused me to see God in a different light. And I'm just seeing, Lord, I don't know what you're doing with me, but I'm just appreciative. For me, that's me with him. So I am seeing what she's saying. And I'm really looking to say, yes, the first place you go when you get certain things is on your knees for clarity. Point me, Lord, to where I need to see the clarity of this um, word being fulfilled or whatever. And then to know that um, one read the other's book and Daniel read Isaiah's. And I'm like, my goodness. I said, this one was this old. I didn't know these things. So I am just still fascinated with all of this. And I'm just like in awe as we speak right now. All right, you know? Sister Angie, thank you so much. All right. Can I just close with this one? Same selected messages. Elder Silver. So, yes, sir. If permitted, I just want to make a quick um, statement. Um, am I permitted? Uh, is there yeah, a go time? ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Even though, even though um, the time is passed. Yes. One of the reasons why I, I don't know if I am like, Anyway, one of the reasons why I talk about like somebody in the community, I, I'm looking back to myself. I grew up going to church on Sunday for most of my years. And I walked away because of many things that within my conscience was not appropriate. Right. And um, I remember being talked between sad, Saturday and Sunday. And I start going back to all the persons that I know in the Sunday church. And they could not point me where my conscience could bear witness to what they were saying is true, right? So I remember, I, 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 I'm a sartorial artist originally, right? And I'm, I remember- I'm, I'm begging excuse. Okay. What does that mean? Go ahead, Bernard. Okay. Sure. All right. Um, I'm a sartorial artist originally, and I remember this man that I had done some clothing for. And he, he used to go to church on Saturday. So I saw him passing, and I stopped him. And he come off his bicycle and put it over in the bush section and sit down to talk with me about going to church on Saturday. But those persons that I used to go to church on Sunday never give me the time. Now, this man was not even a Seventh-day Adventist. He was a Seventh-day Pentecostal, but he gave me the time. So, and it made a difference for me. So that's why I will say, and I understand what you're saying to Elder, and um, I am not divided and I'm not disrespecting you. I cannot do that and I will not do that. So I just want to put it out. I'm not in the vision, I'm not of that, but I'm going to be strong, passionate about what I'm trying to bring across. You know, so, just want to say thanks to you for the way your the Lord is able helping you to put across um, what these things that you're putting across. But, but I will just say what um, I think as I want to go forward learning. And the last thing the sister was talking about, the verse in the Bible that said that will not hold them witness is actually the commandment um, in a portion of it in Exodus 20, verse 7. Um, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold them guiltless that taketh his name in vain. 
thank you again, Elder Sylvester. All right, thank you, Brother Henry. I, I, Pastor, I know the time is up. Just give me the chance to read this. So this was a gentleman who believed, you know, that they were having great experiences. I remember the first week we were hearing about a lot of experiences. He says, as this brother and his wife outlined their experiences, which they claim have come to them as a result of receiving the Holy Ghost with apostolic power, it seemed to be a simile of that which we were called to meet and correct in our early experience. Now, in their early experience, after the, the disappointment, there were three groups uh, of, of people. Some went back to their old churches. Some started to spiritualize everything. And there was a lot of fanaticism. And uh, uh, the servant of the Lord, she's, she had to confront with a lot of that and a lot of these you know, fanatical doctrines as well. So she said, what was going on with this brother? I believe there was, a, there was also another group, recall, remind me Marvin, who, who were the Holy Flesh group, right? And um, this is what she says. She said, towards the close of our interview, Brother L proposed that we unite in prayer with the thought that possibly while in prayer, his wife would be exercised as they had described to me and that then I might be able to discern whether this was of the Lord or not. So she would, he was hoping that she would have some vision that she would see. She said to this, I could not consent because I had been instructed that when one offers to exhibit these peculiar manifestations, this is decided evidence that it is not the work of God. So I would just like to close by saying, folks, that when I, I'm suggesting to everyone to go and study out Joel too. I know you have heard the many interpretations, but I plead with you tonight, my brethren, go back and study. If the prophet is pointing you to visions and dreams, he is pointing you back to the Bible. That's my encouragement to us tonight, Virgin. Let's go back to the word of God. Let us be guided by the word of God. What Amen. was proclaimed by the Amen. That's all I key know. Is that key know? Marvin Nelson. <laughs> all right, Marvin. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you so much. Pastor. Uh, before I close off, is there any more questions? Um, did I did we leave anyone um, more confused? No, you gave us a homework, homework, Brother Sylvester. Sister Lisa, nice to have you on, and you're not being on YouTube tonight. Mm. <laughs> Anybody else? Anybody else wants to come in before we close off? I know Debbie needs to go to bed. Anybody else? All right, so I think I can stop here. Pastor, your time. Yes, sir. You may go ahead and pray to close up. All right, let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the guidance of your word. We thank you for the leading of your word. Help us, Lord, that we may understand that everything that we believe must be tested according to Isaiah 8.20. And if they speak not according to your law and your testimony, then we are duty bound to reject it. Thank you for hearing and answering us tonight. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you so much, Brother Sylvester. Um, thank you everyone for joining the study tonight. Uh, tomorrow we have a program lined up as usual. We begin at 8.30, Jamaica time, and uh, we have a full day's program tomorrow. Last week, we, grow, we, we, had, um, we broke the schedule and joined the convention, International Convocation. But tomorrow, we have a full schedule, and I'm looking forward to seeing us tomorrow. Have a good night, rest everyone. God bless. Good night, family, tomorrow. Good Blessings night. and good night. Sleep well. Night, everyone. Night, everyone.